Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I'm converting this particular site from a classic theme into a block theme. Now, there's something of particular interest I wanted to show you because this is something that we built in the olden days. So if I wanted to have this text look a little bit different and it's using this old editor in WordPress, I would need to probably go into my text area and say maybe this is going to have an H4 with a class of question. And then I'll close off, of course, the H4, hit save or update here. And once I reload here, I would get this new change. And that is because I have this class styled up. The class of question is actually styled up here in my theme. Now, this becomes relatively harder for people who are not good with HTML and so on. So what I did is I built this little icon or basically I extended the tiny MCE in the editor. And what you would do is you would select this text and click this and that would automatically create you this H4 tag with this class in here. So let me hit update here and you're going to see that this is reloaded. Now, if you want to see how I made this little extension in the tiny MCE, let me know in the comments so that I will show you how to do it if you still are using the classic editor. But my advice would be that WordPress is changing in the next five years. The tiny MCE might not be something you want to use. So you need to use the block editor. There is a way of doing something similar in the block editor and that is available for us to use. So I'm going to do that. First and foremost is I'm going to change this whole editing experience from what we have here because you'll see I'm doing so many things like adding a gallery, I needed to extend the time MCE, then having the short description that is also time MCE so that I could be able to have all this information coming in here and then having a brief, let's say I do this, Lawyer Mipsum for the description, hit update so that you see the short brief here. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll go to my editor. I'll go inside my theme. I'm going to go to the place where I register the custom post type. And that is within this file. And I'll go to, I'm going to look for Safari's post type where we have it here. And the first thing that I'll do is I'm going to show in rest. So I'm going to duplicate this here and say show in rest. And that will be true. So that when I come back here and reload, of course, it's going to ask me about HTTP. I'm going to ignore that. And then now you'll see that we have everything here and we can convert this to blocks. Now, of course, this is with H4. And you can see that right now I can actually change the text color. I can change the background using what is already existing here. Now, if I was to go and look in the editing experience where I turn on the code editor, you'll see that this has a heading level four. It has all these classes, but it no longer has my class of question, which is something that probably I intended for my theme to have. I didn't want to use these colors and backgrounds of all of this. So the other thing that I could do is come here and say, okay, in the advanced, I'm going to add a question in here and click update. You'll see that it has the custom class of question right here, but this other one is just an H4. It doesn't have that class. For your ordinary user, having to explain that they have to add this class of question could be laborious because they'll also forget which class that I should add here. We're going to have something that you can click here in the side that can add the style to this particular text that you have here. So I'm going to go back here, go in advanced, remove this class, and I'm going to hit update so that we have the very basic. I'm going to add a new style to our H4. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new file and say this is blocks. I'm going to add styles. So everything that I do in here is going to be at the block level. So I'll say, let's say this is h4.php. So what I need to do here is come to my functions because that's how I was registering all the files. I'm going to come here down 
and I'm going to start adding block stuff. So block stuff. And I need to go get this relative path. I'll paste it here, then I'll get everything that I need of. So I need to get this blocks.php, replace it here, clean up this other part. So that means we don't have the ink. This is just purely blocks, styles. So I can actually save this now and then I can begin writing my code in here. So we'll open up with PHP, add our comments and say add new h4 block style. So the first thing I'll do is add an if statement and inside here we're going to check for whether the function actually exists. So I'll say if the function that I'm looking for is register block underscore style because we don't know what version of WordPress the person is going to use. So we'll have to first check if that function exists, then we can use it. In this function, you actually have to have the block name and then you can add the properties that exist. So the block name is actually going to be core slash heading. Now the style properties, of course, are an array of data. And inside here, we can have the name. We're going to duplicate this and we'll have the label. And then we can have what is the inline underscore style. So we need to define this. I'm going to add spaces here and say the name of this will be the question style. Do the same thing here and say the label will be question. And then of course, in this section here, we can add and say the class that we want to have is question. Now I'll save this. Let's come back to our editing experience. I'm going to reload this page. We seem to have an error. So let me go into my debug.log and we see it tells us that the function register block styles was called block style must not contain any spaces. So I'm going to come back to our h4.php and the name should not have any spaces. So let's just call it question. I'll save this. I'll come back here, reload. So if I select this now, you'll see here we have style, which is we have the default. Then we have the question style. So if I click this question style, hit update and come back here and reload, you'll see that now this has a class of is style question. Now, all we need to do is come back in here. I'm now going to WPNQ style. And basically I'm going to have a new file that's going to enqueue our styles. So the first thing that I'll do is this will have a new safaris blocks theme as the handle. We're going to add a new source and say, we need to have a new file here, CSS. We'll call it blocks. And inside this blocks, we're going to have, let's say our h4.css. And this is going to have that is style dash question. And the reason this is uppercase is because in here we say the style name is question. Let me make this lowercase so that we can have this also as lowercase. Add a dot here at the end and then of course add our brackets. So I've copied the styles from the previous file. And then the other thing we need to do is say, let's also modify the first child. We're going to append this to the nth child and we just want to get the first item in here. Then we can give it a padding of top zero. I'm going to save this now. And then of course I'll come back here and complete this and say, we need to get the directory style. We're going to copy from our functions and we're going to come back here to the H4 and say, let's add this template style directory. Let's go to the CSS, in this case, slash CSS. Then we'll go to blocks, then we'll get the H4. Change this to CSS and then we'll add that it has no dependencies. And then we'll say the version, let's say will be 1.0. And then we'll add also this for all media types. I'll hit save after adding the semicolon right here. Then I'll come back 
I'm going to reload this. And we see on reloading this, we also have some errors. And converting this into a new theme is also going to give you issues. So you need to be able to have your debug on just to make sure everything is correct. So WP scripts and styles should not be registered on enqueued until the WP and scripts, uh, blah, blah, blah. This notice was triggered by the blocks theme handle. So instead of using a WP and Q style script, I'm going to use uh, something from the block editor itself. I'm going to look for the WordPress block editor assets and Q, something like that. So I just need to look for, yes, this is it, NQ block editor assets. And this is an action hook. And we have an example here of how to do this. So I'm going to add action. I'll just copy all of this. And then I'm going to come back here, paste it. And we have this action hook, which is get the block editor assets. And it's going to look for a function here, which is this. I'll just change this a bit to make it unique to my editing experience. I'm going to move our style in here because that's what we need to do. The only things that we can change from this section is we can say, let's get the URI. Let me also copy the convention that they do have here. I'll cut this, put this here, and then I'm going to replace our block path from here and paste it here so that I can also use this file time to make sure that we are having the right version of our file that is looking neat. I just need to move this variable up here. And then once I do that, I can be able to comment this out and then go back and reload our page. So I'm going to come back here, reload this. You'll see we don't get that error showing up as the page is loading. So that means we can select this text, click question one, and you'll see that even on the back end, we are getting this style now showing up. So if I hit update here and then go on the front end, you're going to see that this is not changing. But if we go to inspect this, you'll see we have our is question style class in here. And that is because this hook, the NQ block editor assets, only does the back end enqueuing of the styles. However, if we remove this word editor and just have in cube block assets, that means we can actually reload this and we'll see it on the front end. And if we reload this also on the back end, we should be able to have this kind of styling happening. So we have this new technique that will allow our people who are editing the site have the same experience both on the back end and the front end and in a simple, simple way that is memorable. The good thing about this is that whatever heading tag that you use, whether it's H2, you can actually apply this style to all the different heading styles and it will work. So this makes it easier depending on how you want to structure the markup, whether it's H6, you can still give it that same style. So you can reuse the same style over the different headings. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see how I actually convert the whole site into a whole new blog editing experience, then let me know inside the comments. Otherwise, enjoy whatever you're developing.